Welcome back, everybody. This is going to be our Algebra 2 Exponential Functions, lesson number four, Finding Equations of Exponential Functions, homework review, part five, and our last question in this homework. So I hope you guys are going to be able to watch the uh, first four videos of what covered the first four questions. And uh, if, hopefully, if you find this one helpful, as the other ones did, please give it a like and make sure to subscribe to the channel. Turn on notifications to know when new videos are added to the channel so you can watch and hopefully hopefully learn some of this material that we're going over today. <clears throat> so in this problem here, engineers are draining a water reservoir until its depth is only 10 feet. Depth increases decreases exponentially as shown in the graph below. The engineers measure depth after one hour to be 64 feet and after four hours to be 4, 28 feet. Develop an exponential equation in y equals a times bx, the dcx form, to predict the depth as a function of hours draining. Round a to the nearest integer and b to the nearest hundredth, then graph the horizontal line y equals 10 and find its intersection. Determine to the nearest tenth of an hour when the reservoir will reach a depth of 10 feet. Uh, well, let's just say in this case my graph is not so great, I had to sketch it and also we'll try to figure out our uh, function based upon based upon uh, the coordinates that we have 1 comma 64 and 4 comma 28 and we are going to do what we did in all the previous problems we're going to plug in the x and y values for each of these coordinates and then try to figure out a function in this case and and kind of at this point uh, try to solve when um, when the value of uh, I guess the time when y is equal to 10. All right, so here we go. So we'll begin with our first equation, our x and y, where y is 64. So we'll use the form 64y is equal to a times b to the first power, and then we'll come up with our second equation, where x and y, where x is 4 and y is 28. So 28 is equal to a times b to the fourth power. And just like before, we're going to basically try to solve some equations. We're going to put the 28 equals a times b to the fourth power on top. And the equation 64 equals a times b to the first power on the bottom, and then divide. And again, the a values will divide out. We are going to get, in this case, b to the fourth divided by b to the first will be b to the third power. And 28 divided by 64, um, I know we can divide that both top and bottom by four, and so we're gonna get, in this case, seven over 16. Now, what we want to do is find the cube root, because in this case, if we're taking some numbers to their power, we're looking for numbers to their power that is going to give us the value uh, that that, um, that will multiply, multiply by itself to, uh, three times, uh, we get 7 over 16. And so what we'll do is we're going to raise both sides to the one-third power. We talked about the idea of trying to get b to the first, we raise the both sides by the reciprocal of the exponent for b. And so what we're going to get here is we're going to get 7 over 16 to the one-third power is equal to b. Well, this can also be the same thing as cube roots because we don't talk about the idea of a fractional exponent being, you know, written as a radical. So let's grab our calculators. Let's clear all stuff from before. And so let's take 7 over 16, so 7, parenthesis, 7, divide by 16, and we're going to raise this to the one-third power. And so one-third. Now we could easily have used the math button to find cube roots, but that's the same thing. So we will find in this case that our base, our base is going to be 7.59147 which in this case, the nearest uh, hundredth will probably be 7, uh, 0.76, okay? All right, so now we take our value here. Now when we write this out, we're going to kind of leave it this way. 
um, and with our decimal, we'll go to near again to near the B value to I think we're rounding the B value to nearest hundred, about 0.76. So B is about 0.76. I'm going to put down approximately 0.76. However, to solve for A, plugging into this uh, using these coordinates, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to, I'm going to probably use in this case, keeping the same number um, in this situation, we're going to get 64 is equal to A times 7, 7 over 16 to the one third power raised to the first power. And so we're going to divide 64 by this number here, this 7 over 16 to the one third power. So we divide both sides by this here, which is about 0.76. So you, you, I just keep this everything the same. It up to you. I like I like I don't like rounding off to the very end. That's not my thing. You say sometimes why is that the case? Sometimes the decimals do come into play and pretty important. So we take 64 and divide by this 7 over 16 to the one third. Okay, so we'll have 64 divide by and now if we don't want to copy down this decimal, we can go straight back to the original 7 over 16 to the one third power. Hit enter. And that's what we're doing to find the A value. And hit enter here. And we get 84.305. And so therefore, we are mentioning in this case that we're going to take the A value to the nearest integer. And that means in this case, we're going to look at the, de the tenth. Since 0 0.3 is less than 0 0.5, we're not going to round up and keeping A about 84. Okay. All right. So. Since we have A about approximately 84, so A is approximately approximately 84, and our B value is approximately 0.76. The function we're going to use to measure the height of the water is Y is equal to 84 times 0.76 to the X power. And this is the function we're going to be getting here. Now, we want to, we, now we want to, in this case, it says here that we want to uh, draw a horizontal line for y equals 10. Now, 10 would be this first hash mark here. So we draw a horizontal line, maybe a dotted line here. All right. Well, according to my graph, you know, I'm looking at this, it looks a little bit after five, although I, I do think that we go back to the original, it might be a little bit different though. And so we want to calculate in this case, you know, maybe not so much of my graph here because it may, now it's kind of sketch, kind of funny, but how will we be able to find the, it says here, find the intersection, determine the time to the nearest tenth of an hour. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to enter this into our graphing calculator, the 84 times 0.76 raised to the x power and 10. So I'll go to graphic calculator. So y is equal to, let me just clear some of this stuff here up from previous problems, clear. And so we had our function here 84 and y is 84 times 0.76. That's what we're rounding off to, raised to the x power. And so that's the function we're going to use to model the model the height of the water. And then because they want to know when the, when the height is 10, we'll use y equals 10. Now, because of this 10 here, we'll probably want to take a look at the window in this case. So we're going to change our window for x min to be 0. And uh, I think our x min actually 10. Okay. And so after we do change the window, we're going to hit zoom and we're going to use what's called zoom fit. Zoom fit really allows us to take a look at the window created by the domain, meaning the x values. So we're looking for all, you know, for all values from x values from 0 to 10, it will kind of fit the y value into the graph itself. Okay. And so when we graph this. We'll see here that it looks like the intersection point is a little further past five. So my graph is not that great. 
However, so it is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, like seven and, and almost like 7.7 .7 here. But how do we find this? Well, we will use this calc part here, his second trace. And we're going to use the uh, five intersect. Intersect means please identify where the two graphs intersect. Now we'll move the, the cursor closer to the point intersection. Definitely looks like it's seven something. So, all right, so it's pretty darn close here. Now we hit enter once, twice, one more time. And we see here the intersection is going to be 7.7549, which we round in this case to maybe the nearest hundredth, we'll get 7.75. Okay, so it looks like in this case that, that when x equals 7.75 hours, we're going to have a height of 10. Okay, so, so we'll say in this case, when will the reservoir, so when does the reservoir reach the height of 10? To the nearest tenth of an hour, or nearest tenth of an hour. Well, nearest tenth of an hour will be in this case 7.8. Okay, just double check to make sure. We had 7.75 before. Yes, yeah, so nearest tenth means we're going to go to the hundredth place, and if it's five or higher, we round up one. So we'll, so we'll say in this case to, to uh, 7.8 here. So the height, so in this case, you say the height of the water in the reservoir. Reservoir, reservoir. There you go. We'll reach ten feet at about seven point eight hours. Okay, because in this case x is in hours. Okay, so about so set about after about seven point eight hours. And so this is how we use graphing calculator to help us find this null. Although we will be learning something later on how to find the value of x when it's in an x one. That's coming up later on in our studies, though. But this here is our function to to approximate the height of the graph. And of course, the we use a graphing calculator to type this in. And of course, y equals ten to find the point of intersection. And that's about it, ladies and gentlemen. This is the end of our Algebra 2 Exponential Functions, Lesson 4, Find the Equations of Exponential Functions, Hulk Review. And this is the end of number 5, which is hopefully the end of our homework. If you found this helpful, please give this video a like, uh, subscribe to the channel, and leave any questions or comments in the comment section below. I would love to hear what you guys thought of the video and what, what ways can possibly make this better, maybe less yawning. Right, because it's it's a little late when I do these things, but I am so happy that you guys are watching and hopefully learning how to find exponential equations. Thanks so much for watching, everybody, and I hope you guys had a really good holidays, and I hope to see you later on in class. All right, and of course in the next video. Take care, everybody, and be safe.